back to another discipleship lesson. And today we're going to talk about the subject of investing in the kingdom of God. So I encourage you to get a Bible and join me as you're turning to Luke chapter 12. I want to thank you and appreciate you for being a diligent disciple, someone who is, uh, has a passion to be more like Jesus Christ. And right here in the beginning of your walk with God, as you start walking with God, or even if you've been walking with God a while and you are just working on the principles of faith again, encourage you to consider this lesson as integral. All of these lessons are so important, but you're going to find this lesson to be part of the, um, the fulfillment of living for God. A lot of discipleship is investment in defensing yourself against and insulating yourself against the world. But in this dimension of living for God, you're going to discover that stewardship is the proactive. It is God pouring out his favor and blessings in our life. Luke chapter 12, verse 42. And the Lord said, who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season? I tried to read the inflection as a question because Jesus is asking a question. Who will be a steward in order to be uh, in a place where they can give and a place where generosity can flow. So I'm asking the same question today to every new disciple. Will you be an investor? Stewardship, will you be an investor? Will you invest? Um, a steward is a person please write this down. A steward is a person who has been entrusted with time, talent, and treasure in order to accomplish a purpose. As you reflect today on the gifts that God has given you, these three things, everything about our life can be categorized under these three areas. Time, talent, and treasure. And stewardship is the use of time, talent, and treasure to accomplish the purposes that God gives us. Time with family, treasures invested in family, talents, nurturing talents within our family. But more importantly, most importantly, the kingdom of God. As we grow, God will entrust us with many, many blessings. And a life of discipleship is a blessed life of stewardship. I'm going to go to Psalm 1. I invite you to Psalm 1, the first psalm. It's in the Old Testament, the book of Psalms. And the very first psalm, we call it the Song of Life. And uh, it this uh, gives us a, a picture of that fruitful and blessed life of stewardship. I'm going to read the whole psalm to you. I, I hope to not stop and comment, but I'll try my best to read the entire psalm. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but... His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now it changes. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. 
For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. This first Psalm captures the two lifestyles, the two kinds of living and uh, in a perfect song. And Cornerstone Tabernacle, we want to sing that righteous song. We want to live that life of righteousness before God and godliness before God. Uh, and this positions us as stewards, it positions us to be blessed abundantly. I want to cover the three areas, time, talent, and treasure, and maybe give some recommendation or some direction about how to be a steward in these three areas. James chapter 4 verse 14. If you have a Bible, go back to the New Testament now, to the book of James chapter 4 verse 14. James said, whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. James is saying, we don't understand what's coming tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, then vanisheth away. You may be young and feel full of vigor and vitality and uh, the strength of life. You may be in the season, the zenith season of life. But if you'll just take a moment to uh, think about it with me. It's only going to be just a few years and that will all change. Give your time to God now. There are 24 hours in a day. Uh, when I first started my beginning with Jesus Christ, I tried to uh, tithe. That is one-tenth. The scripture teaches us uh, a principle called the tithe. And I tried to give 2.4 hours a day to the Lord. I reached for it. Uh, sometimes I hit it. Sometimes I didn't. But I did my best to give God the very best time. The early morning hours were, uh, was my rhythm. It was uh, where my head is clear and my heart is rested. And, and I would try my best to give God early morning hours of time. And uh, usually after 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm, I'm beat. And so it would be exhausted time that I would give the Lord. I want to give God the very best of my time that he has given me. Let's look at talent. Uh, Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 and 15. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to every man according to his several ability, distinct ability, and straightway took his journey. Jesus is teaching that this kingdom of God, the kingdom of work, is as if Jesus Christ, that one who has all the goods, has given it to his people. He gives to one um, five talents. To another, he gives one talents, talent. And then to another, ten talent. Two talents, rather. And as the ability of the person to handle the talent. Now, in this particular text, a talent is a particular weight or goal of, of goods. Um, we would say the gifts God has given us, or we would say the abilities God has given us, because ability is in the text. Capability, skills. And uh, right here in your walk, beginning walk with God, say to God, I'm willing to invest my time that you've given me, Lord. I'm willing to invest the talents that you've given me. If you're a gifted singer, it won't be long until that gift will manifest itself and giving it to the Lord rather than using it for other reasons. This is that call of stewardship. If you are a gifted musician or you're gifted with communication or writing, if you have a gift and a talent to write and communicate, whatever area, 
of, uh, of giftings and abilities you have, we're going to call, you're going to hear a call of stewardship to invest those in the kingdom of God. So we have time, we have talent, we have treasure. Treasure, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter nine, six through nine. Paul is going to write to this church and he says, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly, sparingly means uh, without generosity, just a little, shall also reap just a little sparingly. He that he which soweth bountifully, bountifully means very generous, shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he hath purpose, purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. I'm going to give my time. I'm going to give my talent. I'm going to give my treasure. I'm going to give in a cheerful and bountiful way. And God, now verse 8, here's the promise. Oh, new disciple, listen. God is able to make all grace abound toward you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things. God is able to bring us because of a life of stewardship to the point where we have everything that we need and that every good work will be funded in time, talent, and treasure. Verse number nine, as it is written, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. These are the three distinct areas that New Testament disciples have been called to be stewards, time, Talent and treasure. Time, talent, and treasure. Now, when it comes to treasure, there's three areas that the New Testament deals with. First of all, it's called tithe. That's one-tenth. I was reaching for one-tenth of my time and uh, giving the tithe of talent. I want to give it all to the Lord. But, but those are not commands. There, are, there is a command, there is a, an expectation, a divine expectation upon our treasures. And tithe is care of God's ministers. Offerings are care of God's causes. Uh, we give offering to a cause. Then thirdly, almsgiving. You're going to come across that in your uh, Bible reading. That's going to be probably Matthew chapter uh, six, some, 6 or 7 right in there. Almsgiving, which is care of the poor. And as you begin to walk with God, become intentional with your time, your talent, and your treasure. Volunteer at the church. Offer your abilities, skills to advance the mission of the church. Develop an attitude of cheerful generosity toward investing yourself your time, your talent, your finances, your church, your treasure into the work of God. Now in lessons to come, we'll explore these specific areas of tithe, offering, um, and uh, almsgiving. We'll look at those in other lessons so that you can receive a greater appreciation for all the blessings that God has given us. But listen carefully, in the marketplace of life, there are two kinds of personalities. There are consumers and there are investors. The marketplace of life, there's only two kinds of personalities, consumers and investors. Will you be an investor? Obviously, there's going to come uh, times in our life when we need to be a consumer. God is going to uh, give it to us and, and it's for our benefit. But if we can approach our discipleship with this spirit, I am going to be an investor. And so today I call you through this lesson to the life of stewardship, will you invest? Consider these things, reach out to us with questions and God will prosper you and he'll bless you as you become a steward in his kingdom. 
God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining me.